Do you want to see a train that will completely blow your mind? This is the groundbreaking Fuxing Intelligent EMU, the world's first driverless high-speed train. I'll take this cutting-edge bullet train on a trip through rural China, showing you all the incredible technology packed into this striking bullet train. And that's not all, as I'll be traveling in a private business class suite. This is going to be one of my most extreme train journeys yet, so join me as I head to Beijing. Hello and welcome to Huhalt in the Inner Mongolia region of China. Today I'm stood outside of Hohot East High Speed Rail Station and I'm going to be catching one of China's many high speed G trains. However, this isn't just any journey as I'm going to be traveling on board the self driving CR400 BF-C. This is going to be an incredible journey in the business class suites. Let's go. Good afternoon from Hohot, a city in northern China with a population of 3 million. However, despite their size, the city is almost totally unknown in the West. It's part of the Inner Mongolia region and is even the provincial capital, the region being one of the only places in the world to use the traditional Mongolian script. Just look at that. Outside the station, you can find the ticket office. This features a huge row of ticket machines with a screen showing any available seats. Trains in China sell out fast. There are also staffed ticket counters, though I recommend buying online for ease. The station is accessed on foot by this rather strange underpass. It was a very weird place, with a lot of shouting for some reason. You can also arrive here by taxi or take the Hohot Metro. The entrance to stations in China can be intimidating for the inexperienced traveler. Tickets are linked to your ID, and foreigners have to head to the manual inspection lane to show their passport. Then, an airport-style security check. It's always worth getting here early, just in case. As a major station, Hohot East has a large selection of food and drinks for sale. Even Western classics such as McDonald's and KFC make an appearance, also displaying their brands in the traditional Mongolian script, which I thought was pretty cool. There are also many typical Chinese chains dotted throughout the station, and perhaps most interestingly, the Russian import shop. A lot of people say that Chinese high-speed rail stations are very samey and characterless, but I disagree. Hohot East features a large dome, inspired by the Mongolian nomadic Ger tents, with many traditional patterns worked into the modern architecture. There's also a help point and a water refilling station. But the bad news is, unfortunately, the station's museum and moral model hall were not open today. As I'm traveling business class, I get access to the lounge prior to departure. This is sort of tucked away in the corner, and it's not obvious that the station even has a lounge at first glance. Indeed, many stations in larger cities do not. Hello. Not all lounges on the Chinese railway network are created equal, but this one was actually all right. There was plenty of choice of seating, some power sockets, and most importantly, the lounge provided a respite from the booming announcements on the main concourse. There's a reasonable selection of packaged snacks for such a small lounge, with a range of drinks available too. And here in the fridge, you can find the exact same drinks, only the ones in here were cold. OK, just finished in the business lounge here in Huard de Dong station. Wasn't anything too impressive, but it does the job for a few minutes. Anyway, let's head over to the train and find my business suite for the journey to Beijing. My train today is the 1446 to Beijing North, train number G2470. G is the highest category of train on the Chinese railway network, promising the fastest journeys and great service on board. Safe to say I'm looking forward to seeing what today's trip will be like. Another ticket check is required to reach the platform, and as a business class passenger, I get to use the priority access lane. A good thing too, as these queues can get very long. And here it is, China's incredible self-driving high-speed train, the CR400BF-C. 
This beautiful bullet train was built in 2020, coinciding with the launch of the Jingzhang Intercity Railway, the first driverless high-speed line in the world. It's adorned in a special livery for the 2022 Winter Olympics, a striking design featuring flowing snowflakes and silhouettes of athletes. Let me know in the comments if you know of any other similar designs elsewhere in the world. I really love this livery. I'm travelling in Coach 1, in the small six-seat business class section, tucked away by the rear cab. These seats are in a 1 plus 1 layout, with a staggered arrangement, meaning some seats are situated away from the window. But I've lucked out. My seat is 1F, one of the seats that is next to the window. Today's route sees us heading east across Inner Mongolia to Zhangjiakou, where the train will then drive itself beneath the Great Wall of China, all the way to Beijing. Journey time is scheduled to be 2 hours and 26 minutes, covering 459 kilometers, or about 285 miles. We depart one minute early, at 14.45. Right now, the train is under human control, and will remain so for quite a while. Only the later Zhang Jiakou to Beijing section of our route is fitted with driverless technology. There are two railways between Hohort and Zhang Jiakou, the classic line down below and the high-speed line we're on now. While we'll reach Zhang Jiakou in about an hour and a half, the classic line takes over five and a half hours. Just goes to show how much of a game-changer high-speed rail can be, especially for communities surrounded by mountains. So let's start off with a look at my private business class suite, and believe me, there's a lot to dive into here. This suite resembles that you'll find on long-haul business class flights. It's like a little private room to yourself. There's a good amount of padding. It's not the softest seat out there, but was very comfortable and had ergonomic shaping. There's also a padded head cushion, which can be moved up and down to fit your height. Here is the seat's single proper armrest. Yes, that's right, just one. The other side only has a little flap, folded away in here. Much like on airlines, the gimmick of a privacy door can be found in business class. This seems quite cool at first, but even with the door open, you can't see your fellow passengers, but anyone standing up can see in anyway. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is this door useless or am I just being too harsh? These seats also come with a cushion you can place where you like to give better support or enhance comfort. Each of these business class suites have a side table, ideal for keeping things within reach. There's an intricately detailed groove for placing a drink and even a wireless charging pad. The windowsill serves as a shelf, with enough room for a drink or your phone. Lastly, there's a work table that slides out from beside the seat. This was pretty wide and good enough for lighter laptops or phones and tablets using this holder. Now of course, the seat's main feature is its futuristic comfort control panel. But that'll have to wait for now, as it's time for the onboard service. Each passenger in business class gets a complimentary snack box, with different levels of quality depending on the regional division responsible for the service. The snack box contains some six items. I do wonder how much of this actually gets eaten. There's also a choice of drink. I went for a hot tea. Business class also includes a complimentary hot meal, but this is only served at certain times. And I travelled outside these hours, so none was offered. Outside, we're speeding through the Inner Mongolia region of China. This is one of the country's least densely populated regions, with most of its population here, in the southern part of the region, away from the international border. Scenes like this are what truly help you to appreciate the transformational nature of high-speed lines, as our cutting-edge bullet train speeds through mountains and across valleys. 
After a while, we slow down and enter another one of the region's few urban areas. This is Ulan Chab, a city of 1.7 million. While the station is in the city, it's away south from the center. Our time in Ulan Chab is brief, and just a few minutes later, we're back up to speed. Our current maximum speed is 250 km an hour, which is pretty slow, at least by Chinese standards, and we'll be going much faster later on. But before we get there, let's go and have a look around the rest of the train. First and business class get access to a dedicated toilet, located between the two classes. This toilet is a lot fancier than the others found on this train. No, seriously, it's a completely different design. Everything was spotless, with a posh bottle of soap provided and a stylish golden tap. First class is a major step down from business class, though it's still more than good enough, featuring spacious 2 plus 2 recliners. Second class is in a 2 plus 3 layout. I'm not a fan of 2 plus 3 seating on trains. I can't imagine anyone is. But the seat comfort and legroom here is really great, and I'd have no problem spending longer journeys here to save money. This is the multifunctional carriage, featuring a buffet counter selling hot takeaway meals, as well as drinks and snacks. Now you might think this is a seating area for dining passengers, and you're sort of right. However, these seats can also be booked and reserved, and passengers will spend the entire journey here. And in line with this train's Winter Olympics theme, you'll find ski storage throughout the train. Zhangjiakou will be our next station, where the train will start driving itself, and we're rapidly closing in. But let's quickly take a look at the last few amazing features in the business class suite. This is the seat's media screen, available only in business class. Here you can see journey progress, a live speedometer, and a map of the train. There are also a few videos about the train itself, though no actual movies or TV shows. There's also no Wi-Fi. Not really a problem, as mobile signal in China is excellent, even in the most barren areas. Up here is the seat's power socket, compatible with different types of plug. There's also a USB socket. This seat can be adjusted on three axes and does transform into a flatbed, much like its airline counterparts. And it's a pretty decent place to lie down too, with a reasonably sized foot cubby at the end. You're also able to adjust the lower leg support and customize the seat into the most comfortable position. Another feature borrowed from the airlines is the individual air vent, found above each suite. There's also electronically dimming windows, a high-tech feature, though uh, I prefer the blind, it works better. Luckily, one feature they didn't take inspiration from was belts on the seats. However, there were belts down here for some reason, and I'm not sure why. Tell me in the comments if you have any idea why this could be here. We're now entering the city of Zhangjiakou. Internationally, this is best known for partly hosting the 2022 Winter Olympics. But this is a railway channel, so for me, this is notable as the beginning of the self-driving section of High Speed Line. And just like that, our train begins to drive itself towards Beijing. The Jingsheng Intercity Railway running from Beijing to Zhangjiakou is the world's first high-speed railway developed for driverless train technology. Most services use CR400 BFG or CRH5 trains, however, these units require a driver, making our train a very special catch. Only three of them were ever built. Passing above is the new high-speed line from Chongli, a popular ski resort town. No doubt now even more popular, as it's only 90 minutes away from Beijing by train. 
we just left Zhangjiakou, which now means that the train is driving itself. Absolutely incredible bit of technology for the remaining one hour ride into Beijing. We're now speeding along at up to 300 kilometers an hour, which is the maximum achieved on today's journey, despite the track and train being authorized for hire. This is the Guanting Reservoir, built in the 1950s. It was originally a key source of water for Beijing, falling out of use in the 1990s. And this tunnel is the one that will carry us at speed under the Great Wall of China, with the track to the platforms of the station being just about visible here. Believe me, this station is a long way underground. And as we're closing in on the capital, let's talk about how much this trip costs. I think the price will surprise you. My one-way refundable business class ticket costs just 646 Chinese Yuan, clearly an unbelievable price for such a luxurious experience on a top-rate high-speed train. We've made it to the massive Chinese capital city, Beijing, and slowly pull into Beijing North Station, one of the few true terminal stations on the Chinese railway network. Arrival is four minutes early at 17.08. Overall, this was a faultless trip with China Railways. These new Fuxing trains are a well-built and smooth ride, and the business class suite is a great product, not to mention the cutting-edge driverless technology that safely delivered us to Beijing. But this isn't the only cutting-edge high-speed train in the world with the French TGV duplex also being known for its record-breaking speed and unique double-decker design. An incredible experience that you can see by clicking up here now.